So many of us dream of quitting our jobs in the city, going off the grid and escaping to a beautiful country property. The couple that we're about to meet have done exactly that, and with a lot of style. Let's go check out their place. G'day Paul. Hey Bryce. Nice to meet you. Hey Annette, how are you? Hey, good, thanks. <laughs> Lovely to meet you both. <laughs> thanks. This is a tiny house that looks like it is prepared for anything, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> sure is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about all of the stuff that you've got going on here, because it looks like an eclectic mixture of all kinds of off-grid technology. <laughs> yeah, so we've got uh, the solar hot water, the solar electricity, and we've got the biogas and rainwater collection. So we're all completely set up for off-grid living. And what was it that actually inspired you to look into all of these different technologies? Well, we were really passionate about uh, renewable energy. Um, so we really want to make sure we made that switch to that, just to um, be carbon free. Yeah, we just wanted to have a really low carbon footprint, I suppose, mm. yeah. So we were living in an apartment lifestyle in Sydney. And being in apartments, you can't put solar panels on their roofs. Um, we were even putting a solar panel on the balcony to get started <laughs> and a, a DIY home bias, <laughs> yeah. which didn't quite work out very well because it's very hard to get cow manure in a city. <laughs> so um, yeah, that was that was like, a, and we were always going out camping as yeah. well. So and we tried to steal some cow manure from a paddock, but that didn't work out too well either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. so um, in the end we're like, you know what, let's, um, let's go live in nature and go live off renewables yeah. off-grid, it's what we really wanted to do. And we fell in love with uh, Bryce's videos, uh, especially the one Lucy in New Zealand. Yeah. And um, that inspired us to build our own. So instead of getting a mortgage or anything, we just just yeah, just built a tiny house and went off grid. And we haven't looked back. We love it, especially yeah. in the Byron area here. Exactly. It's a cute little surfing Perfect. town. It's just it's great. Yeah. Yeah. And you actually built your whole tiny house using the renewable energy on site, didn't that's you? Right. That's right. Yes, yeah, that's all right. our power tools all run from the solar power, yeah. yeah. We knew we wanted to be off-grid on some farmland, so um, we knew we need that power up front to be able to run the tools. So we just, we just had them, some guy in a truck just deliver it both into the middle of a field and we just plugged in and away <laughs> we went. <laughs> that's good. Well, I'm really interested to see the tiny house, but first I would love to have a walk around the outside and have a look at how all of the different systems work. Sure. Definitely. Come check it out. Yep. All right. So first off, we have your solar hot water. Yeah, using evacuated tubes is pretty efficient. We get so much sun here, we could have gone for a simple model, but we wanted to use the evacuated tubes in case we get really overcast, because we've got no backup hot water solutions. So even on overcast or in the winter, it'll still work fine. Now, one of the things that I have never seen in a tiny house before is a biogas digester. Yes. Talk to me about this. I would love to know how this works. So, yeah, how it works is it's just a big bladder of water and biomaterial. So, like your food scraps and or like garden waste or anything that'll break down. And the warmth from the sun, it just um, gets the bacteria going, which just munches it all up and turns it into methane gas, which then we use for cooking. That is fascinating. Yeah, that's cool. And so how much gas does this actually produce? Like, have you ever run out of gas when you're trying to cook something? So it's early stages and yeah. it's summer here, so it's really efficient at the moment. Um, but so far it's been perfect, never run out of gas. We're not feeding it too much actually, no. maybe only like a litre of food yeah. scraps a so day. Yeah, so we can feed it up to six um, litres a day, but we're not doing that at the moment. So it's probably yeah, a litre or two litres a day. And so far it's been fine. Like, yeah. Yeah. And as a byproduct, you get liquid fertiliser out of it as well, mm. which you can use in for the garden. And then speaking of the gardens, you are in an amazing <laughs> location right here, yeah. aren't you? How did you actually come to find this parking spot for the tiny house? <laughs> um, we found that space through friends who were living in this area and they were just asking around for us because they knew that we were about to build our tiny house and um, we also were looking for like not only a spot to build the tiny house but also for a spot to live and it turned out that this land <laughs> like facilitated everything for us so yeah it just worked out really well for us and then tell me about the solar setup on the tiny house how many panels do you have how much storage do you have where do you store it all so we just ordered from an australian company on their website and they just delivered it and um, it's six panels total of 1.86 kilowatt and um, we're storing that into some deep cycle batteries uh, 20 kilowatt hours i believe and that's then running a four kilowatt inverter for your standard off-the-shelf appliances. 
that is a lot of power for a tiny house. <laughs> <laughs> and that's also a lot of batteries to store. So I'm guessing they're not inside the house. No. Where are you actually keeping those? Yeah, so we're keeping them outside the house in just a little makeshift uh, shelter. I'll show you. So um, here we got the, uh, the batteries and up here we got the inverter. Um, yeah, it runs all our house, all our electrics. For the amount of energy that you're using in your tiny house, this must be overkill. Yeah, for right now in the summer, definitely, without a doubt. Um, but for winter, that's where it will get really interesting. Right. See how it goes. I'm yeah. sure it'll be fine though, yeah. Yeah, I, I should imagine it will be fine too. <laughs> that looks very serious. Uh, and then, of course, the other missing part of this equation right now is water storage. Ah, uh, yes. Over that's here. That's right, yep. So here we've got a uh, big 10,000 litre water tank that we collect just from our tiny roof. Um, we use it for drinking, showering, washing, laundry, and uh, the grey water gets used in the gardens. 10,000 litres, again that sounds like a huge amount of water storage for a tiny house on wheels, but then I guess you have to take into consideration the fact that we are in Australia yeah. and drought is a big thing here, isn't it? That's right, yes. So in, the, in spring we actually had like four months of no rain at all, so it's going to be interesting to see how the tank holds up once um, it's spring again, or once we have a drought again. So how long have you actually been living in the tiny house now? It's been three weeks. So. Three weeks? Yeah, not long. <laughs> not long, yeah. So not a huge amount of opportunity to test all of these systems, no. but how is all of this stuff working for you so far? Brilliantly. It's, like, it's really great. So yeah, we have enough water at the moment. We have enough power. We have enough gas. Um, yeah, it's yeah. all good at the moment. All yeah. from renewables, so all we're pretty happy. Renewables, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Well, should we go have a look at the actual house now then? Yeah, sure. Yeah, definitely. Right. Yeah. So what materials did you use in the construction of this house? We used um, cypress and cedar for the outside, cypress for the floorboards and um, also pine for the windows and the door and then lightweight plywood for the interior cladding. You mentioned lightweight. Here in Australia you can build to a maximum of four and a half ton. Yeah. So weight considerations really are a big deal in the tiny houses here, aren't they? Definitely, yes. So that's mm. why we only bought lightweight materials and it was always a big consideration when actually buying materials or when we thought about what to use for like the outside for example or the inside. Well I would love to have a look inside the house and check out what you've done. Perfect, let's go inside. Okay. <laughs> This is super spacious in here, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. good. Yeah. What length is this tiny house? Because this actually looks a lot longer than a lot of the other homes that I've seen here in Australia. Yeah, it's eight meters long. Right. Mm, yeah. So obviously when you're battling with weight, building an eight meter long tiny house, that's a pretty big decision because it's very difficult to build underweight and eight meters long. So what was the thought process that actually went into the length of this tiny house and the design in general? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We wanted it long. <laughs> Fair enough. That's that's the reason. So yeah. Well, like we actually wanted it to be seven meters long. Like the initial design was like just seven meters, but then yeah. um, we found out that we can go up to I think twelve meters legally here in Australia. So we thought, eh, might as well just yeah. add like one meter. Yeah. So that's what we did. But. Yeah, now our weight issue became a bit bigger because obviously it's longer now, but we still don't know how much we actually weigh. So yeah, we still hope we aren't below 4.5. But even if it, if we are over, it's no big deal actually. Like you can, if you get a, like a professional company to come do it, they don't care about your weight. Just like, yeah, no worries. So yeah, that's right. it's no big deal to be honest. And so we are right now here in your lounge and your office. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's lightweight, this couch. Um, we wanted it to be pretty. <laughs> um, we thought about building our own but then we had a little bit of time pressure because we really wanted to move in and we didn't want to build our own couch because we're no furniture makers. <laughs> we just thought it would add to the whole process of you know like um, um, not being able to move in very quickly. So yeah we just ended up buying a couch I suppose. We did build this um, office table. It's a fold-away table and um, it's small enough for the tiny house, it's big enough for Paul and to do his work. Now the workspace here, that's really important for you isn't it Paul? Because you actually work from home in this tiny house, don't yeah, you? Yeah, that's right. I do IT support from home. So um, it's really important to have a decent desk so I can work from yeah, and get good internet here. And then, great size kitchen space that you have here. 
Yeah, it was all a DIY build. We wanted it to be really lightweight. So we um, made it all from plywood. So it's very, very light and pine. And um, yeah, it all came together within a couple of days, I think. One of the really interesting things that I notice about this kitchen as well is that you've got both an electric induction element as well as the gas hob. That's right. So um, the induction is for um, daytime use. So when we have a lot of sun and um, yeah, we can just use the induction because we have excess solar energy that can easily be used for cooking during the day and at night time when there's no sun or if it's overcast and um, we will just use our gas cooktop which is then powered from our home biogas. Very yeah. clever having that multiple use there. Definitely yeah it's been handy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So behind us here we also have a lot of storage space. Yeah we definitely wanted to utilize all the storage under the um, staircase um, so we built our drawers ourselves so that's just for pantry use and for our groceries and then we have some space as well for our fridge um, and as well as some shelves for chopping boards and other things yeah <laughs> I really like how in the space as well you've also left your steel framing exposed definitely wanted to leave it exposed because I think it's the skeleton of our house so I think we should like leave it open for everyone to see and then behind me here we have your bathroom yeah that's right this is a really decent sized bathroom for a tiny house yeah, isn't it? You've it even is. managed to fit your washing machine in That's here. That's right, it's our old washing machine and it's running fully off um, rainwater and um, solar power. Yeah. <laughs> and you've added some really nice DIY touches in here haven't you? I love your green wall and yeah. this beautiful little basin. That's right, it's from a supermarket, it's just a salad bowl. <laughs> <laughs> you have done a great job transforming that into an object of beauty then. <laughs> really good sized shower as well, look, yeah. look at this. It's a standard sized shower, it's um, 900 by 900 and yeah, it totally serves the purpose. Now tell me about your composting toilet here, because it looks like you've actually constructed this one yourself as well. Yes we did, yeah, so we copied a design we found online and just constructed it ourselves using pine wood. Now the compost that actually comes out of that, are you able to use that in your biogas digester? Um, going by the home biogas recommendations, I recommend not to do it if you're going to use it um, as a fertilizer in your garden because it could introduce pathogens, but it was a, an idea that we thought of of a way of getting rid of our, our waste really. Mm. But so on the property right now, you're composting your human you are separate to everything that's going into the biogas that's digester. Right. Yeah, at yeah. this stage, yeah, because we want to use it for the fertilizer for the gardens, yeah. And of course your humanure is perfectly safe to use on the gardens. Eventually it just requires a little bit more compost. That's right, yeah, it's six, to, six months to one year, yeah. Mm. Now over here in your storage loft, no shortage of clothing storage, is there? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, we've got lots, uh, that's all our hanging clothes up there. Um, also we've got like camp gear or winter clothing, um, and that's it really, yeah. And then your sleeping loft is just up here behind us. Yeah. yeah Can sure. we take a look at that? Yeah, sure, yeah. After you. <laughs> What a welcoming little space this is. I really like how you've actually found enough space to store all of your clothing up here as well. Majority of our clothes are up here actually. Um, yeah, it's cool, works well. So tell me about the loft design. Yeah, so we went uh, 2.8 meters long and um, we used the same floorboards that we used for the floor. And yeah, it's plenty big enough for sleeping and we store majority of our books and clothes up here, so that's cool. Yeah, so we yeah. built the shelves ourselves as well, so it's custom made to the size of the loft. <laughs> yeah, again, it's really yeah. lightweight plywood, yeah. like everything's like as lightweight as possible. Yeah. yeah. So how does it feel every day to be waking up in a space that you know you've built yourself? It's Still, amazing. Yeah, it's yeah. really cool, pinching ourselves every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now there's a lot of technology that's gone into this house as well. The solar systems, all of the off-grid utilities, this could not have been a cheap project to have achieved. It was alright actually. So including all the off-grid it came to 65. Not the off-grid, just the house this is 41 it came to. And that's all mostly DIY build. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That really is very impressive considering the amount of utilities that are actually connected to this house and the amount of functionality that you've been able to build into this space. Yeah, that's right. It's um, all year round living for two people really comfortably. So yeah, we're really happy. So what does the future have in store for you both? I guess we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think we 
yeah, we will be enjoying our tiny house for a little while since we just finished building it and just moved in. So it's going to be great to live in it, to live off renewable energy and to produce our own cooking gas and yeah, to enjoy living without a mortgage and um, also without paying utilities. So that's going to be great. And we get to enjoy this beautiful land here, this beautiful um, area as well. So yeah, I think this is what's going to happen next. <laughs> it's a perfect space for us. It's not too small, um, although it is a tiny house, but it really feels, it feels big for us. And both of us, we don't have any um, builder backgrounds. We're not like carpenters or <laughs> anything like that. So I think if we can do it, anyone can do it. Yeah. And it takes a lot of time and research and probably effort and also motivation and times um, to do it. But yeah, I think it's quite rewarding actually because um, you end up with the space you completely build yourself. It's just a really rewarding journey, I think. Mm. And uh, the difference that we pay in rent from um, Sydney apartment, um, we worked out we would have completely covered all expenses within three years. So it's pretty cool. Well, I am so impressed with what you have managed to accomplish here in this tiny house. All of the off-grid features that you've built in and the fact that you did it all yourself is incredible. Thank you so much for sharing your home with me. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> here in Australia, the sun is such an abundant resource in terms of its ability to create power, heat water and do so much more. In the case of this tiny house couple, they have done an amazing job of utilizing that resource and getting themselves off-grid in their own beautiful tiny house. And that is a wonderful accomplishment.